Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to be found in your house one more time, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, that we are still alive and not under the concrete, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, that you have already wrought in us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, that we can still walk and talk. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, that the devil is under our feet. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, that we have food, water, shelter. Thank you, Lord, for peace, love, joy, and happiness, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, that every, for every church door that is open right now, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all the word that is laid out, Lord. And I pray, Lord, for every preacher on this planet and every teacher and every student of the word, Lord. Be with them, Lord. Help them, Lord. Guide them, Lord. Show them the way, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray, Lord, for preaching power, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would take control of my mind, Lord, and take control of my mouth, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord. I also pray for all the bereaved families, Lord. Yesterday, Lord, I went to Reverend Ball K's funeral, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you be with his family, Lord. Be with his children. Be with his grandchildren. Be with his great-grandchildren. Let them know that you are still on the throne, Lord. And you don't plan on leaving, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I pray, Lord, thank you for Reverend RV, Lord. And I pray that thank you for Reverend Milton, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. amen. And amen. 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 Before I get into my text today, I just want to say that despite what you've been going through, and despite all the challenges, and despite everything that you see, God is still good. You know, the world tries to make you focus on one thing and make you focus on all the trouble, but we need to focus on God and see that God is still on the throne. So what I'm really trying to say is that if you really believe that God is still good, you ought to give God some praise. For a little while today, I want to read from Isaiah chapter 26, verse 12 through verse 14. You have it, say amen. amen. The Lord will ordain peace for us. For he has also wrought all our works in us. O Lord our God, other lords besides thee have had dominion over us, but by thee only we make mention of thy name. They are dead, they shall not live, they are deceased, they shall not rise. Therefore thou hast visited and destroyed them and made their memory to perish. For a text I want to use created to dominate. You may be seated. We notice that he says, other, O oh Lord, other laws beside thee have had dominion over us. Well, what is dominion? Dominion is control or to exercise control. Rule, authority, command, domination, jurisdiction, mastery, might, power. So we understand right there what dominion is. But what we need to understand is that when God created us, he gave us the dominion. So if we go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and verse 27. And God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. And let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created his male, male, and female, he created them. So what does it mean to be created in the image of God? What does it mean to be given dominion over the earth and everything on the earth? Created in God's image or likeness is simply saying God created you and I to be a representative or an ambassador for him. 
In other words, when we were created, we would be created to be like God, not to be God, but to do his will and to live a godly life. That is why he gave us dominion, because God is not being dominated by anything or anybody, and he expects the same for us. So when God created us, he had created us to have dominion. He wanted, What kind of God would he be if he would have created us to have something to have dominion over us? He wanted me to be in his image, so if I'm in his image, that means I'm supposed to be like him. So if I'm being like God, then that means he expects me to act like him, and therefore nothing can have dominion over me if I'm acting or if I'm in line with what God has for me. Amen. So when he gave us dominion, he put all things under our feet. And also he gave us an authorization to use his power. Yeah. Yeah. Luke 10 and 19. You don't have to go there. I'll go there. Mm -hmm. I know the scripture. He said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and by no means shall anything hurt you. So, what is he saying? He said, Behold, I'm giving unto you authority, and if I tread those serpents and scorpions, that means I have dominion over them. And he said, Not only do I have dominion over the serpents and scorpions or the devil, he said, I have dominion over all the power of the enemy. So, that means I have all power over all the influences of the devil, over all the influences of the world, and, and, and he said, by no means shall anything hurt me. So if I'm being hurt by something, I'm not focused on what God already told me that I have. Amen. To be like God is to have God's character. To be like God is to act like God. To do what God would do, being who you were meant to be. So we understand that we wasn't meant to be dominated. We wasn't meant to be, well, how, how can something have dominion over me when I was created to have dominion over it? What are some of God's characteristics? Well, God is loving. God is forgiving. God is long-suffering. God is merciful. God is just. God is mighty, and he is not a coward. God is not scared or afraid. God is faith. God is grace. God is salvation. So what you're trying to say, Brother Corey, what I'm saying is, well, if God is faith, he expects me to have faith. If God is grace, then he expects me to show grace. If God is salvation, then he expects me to bring people to him. And if God created me to be in his image or in his likeness, that also means that he intends for us to do the same thing. We are the divine, we are the will of the divine creator. The moment you know life has a story and life has an author and a plot and you are not an accident, then you can better understand your image. So when we come back to Isaiah chapter 26 verse 13, we see... Then at some point he said, oh Lord, our God, other lords beside thee have had dominion over us. But by thee will we only make mention of thy name. So we see that at some point the roles got reversed. How did this, how, how did things start to have dominion over us? What happened? What happened to our authority? Well, it's obviously that they forgot what they looked like. You see, about constantly in acknowledgement of understanding that I, not necessarily physically, but spiritually, I'm supposed to look like God. I'm supposed to act like God. So when you get caught up in stuff that you're not supposed to get caught up in, then you'll forget what you look like. So I stopped by and tell you this morning that you need to remember what you look like. And like I said, not physically, but spiritually. You was created to be a vessel of God. You was created to act like God. You was created to put you on this earth for a specific purpose, and it was not to be dominated by any devil, by any foolishness, by any worldly activity. Because if God created you to be something, he expects you to be that. But if you're not lined up with what he expects you to be, then you'll get caught up in some things that you shouldn't be caught up in. You see, the world always wants to focus on the physical things. Like God, his race, or you know, um, you, you know, everybody likes to say, oh, well, Jesus wasn't white, or Jesus wasn't black. So we get caught up in race. You know what I'm saying? The world is so focused on spreading hate. You know, we argue about God's 
look at his nature, but we need to be focused on God's spirituality and his image spiritually. You see, the Bible says, Thou, how can I say that I love God who I have not seen, but I hate my brother who I have seen? So the world has seen me and hates me, but yet they act like they love God, but there has nothing. The, the, the things of this world that they, that they try to disguise or try to show us has nothing to do with God. So if we go back to chapter, it uh, said, Lord, we ordain peace for us. For thou has wrought all works in us. So that means he's already worked it out for us. He said, oh Lord, our God, other gods beside thee have had dominion over us. So that means other situations and other things of this world and all kind of stuff has got our attention. And it's focused, but, 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 but praise be unto God that at some point he remembered who they was. And he said, by thee will we only make mention of thy name. So what is he saying? He's saying, you know what? We're not going to talk about what we used to be through. We're not going to talk about what I used to be. We're not going to talk about what the world has done for me. But I will only make mention of thy name. So I'm only speak about what God has done for me. I'm only speak about the things that God wants for me. I'm only speak about how he delivered me from out of the pits of hell and put me on a rock. And it's good to know that he put you on a rock because he said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. So you want to be happy that God placed you on a rock and nothing of this world can come against you if you stay lined up with God has done He said, they are dead, they shall not live. They are deceased, they shall not rise. Therefore thou hast visited and destroyed them and made their memory to perish. So he's saying that the memory of what used to dominate you, the memory of what you used to be through has been fully eradicated and it's gone and you got a whole new mind and you got a whole new spirit and you are lined up with what God has done for you and, 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 and you don't, you don't when he said, we're not going to talk about that no more. I'm not going to think about that no more. The, the Amplified Bible says that the former tired masters are dead. They are powerless his verse, they shall not rise. He said, therefore thou hast visited them and destroyed them. He said, every trace of it. So, every trace of what you've been through, you, you're not even going to remember that. Every trace of cancer, or every trace of COVID, or every trace of everything that the world has tried to, dis to, to, to fool you with, to make you think that you don't have the dominion that God gave you. God gave you the dominion for a specific reason. He didn't want you to be dominated by these
So like he said, he said that it's not even going to be any trace of what you used to go through. He's saying that everything that you used to go through is no longer a part of you. I mean, you got to understand what that really means is, you know, you know, we all been through stuff and it seems like for some time it still dominates us and it seems like sometimes we still focused on it and it seems like we have trouble forgetting it. But you can't forget it because he said that, this is what he said. He said, they are dead, they shall not live, they are deceased, they shall not rise, therefore thou hast visited and destroyed them and made all that memory to perish. So God is saying that I have came and I have destroyed all of the things that have had dominion over you and now it is time for you to take your place and establish yourself as what God created you to be. Amen. So that means if you got the devil under your feet and the old things have passed away, that means you got a new mind, that you got a new spirit, you got a different walk, you got a different talk, you got a different attitude. Second Corinthians Verse 4 and 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, he is a new creation, all things have passed away. So if any man be in Christ, this is this is this is proof that, that the dominion doesn't have to have rule over you because once I come into Christ, I am not the same that I was. So you can't come into Christ and be the same person that you was before. You can't come into Christ and still be dominated. You can't come into Christ and still be lost. So we should really seek a true relationship with God. And not only that, line ourselves up with the image of God so I can look like God, not physically, but spiritually. <laughs> Just God is a good God, like I said earlier. So God doesn't want us to live a defeated life. God doesn't want us to have a defeated mindset. God doesn't want us to just have, have things just troubling us and messing with us and we just don't know what to do about it. He said that he said that he has given us dominion over the earth and over everything that is in the earth. So if I have dominion over the earth, what do I do? I walk on the earth. So what that's saying is when I walk on the earth, then I'm supposed to be walking over everything else that can ever try to come against me because if I am in God, if God lives in me and I live in God, then it is a constant reality of who I am in Jesus Christ. So therefore, nothing should be able to come against me or when trouble does come against me, I am reminded that I that, that I, I am seated together and raised up together in heavenly places. So if I'm seated up together in heavenly places with Christ, far, far above, what does that say? That it's saying that the devil is under my feet. So I just I'm gonna go uh, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and close. But, um, I just wanted to tell y'all, you know, we are created to dominate. We weren't created to be dominated, you know. And if we're being dominated by something, then that obviously means that we are not doing what God told us to do. So it's, it, it, it's very, it's very important for us to understand that we need to have the same image as God has. He created you to be in His image and to be in His likeness. So therefore, He created you to try to, like I said, we cannot be God, but we can try to be like God and not try to be like God because we have opportunities every day that's going to present itself that you can act like God. There's every, you know, somebody might say something to you that you don't want to say, but it's still a person back at them, bless them. Somebody might hit you, but you know, that's kind of hard to do to turn the other cheek. But Jesus wouldn't have commanded you to do something if he wasn't capable of doing it. So like I said, understand that every trace of what used to dominate your life is fully gone and it is fully eradicated and it is time for us to walk in what God has done for us. Don't get caught up in what the world is trying to show us. Don't get caught up in what you see on TV. Don't get caught up in what the devil Because that is not of God. I'm not telling you not to be aware of it, but I'm telling you to understand that you are a child of God, and God doesn't want you to be worried about none of that because you have dominion over all of that as well. So before I go to my seat, I'm going to tell you to take your place in Christ, establish yourself in Christ, understand what God did for you and what Jesus did for you on the cross. He destroyed all the works of Satan. He, he went to hell and destroyed everything that sin could have ever done for you. And the good part about it is even though you wasn't there, it said that he saw you there 
and there's 145 scriptures in the Bible that tells you who you are in Christ. So in Christ, I'm not a coward. In Christ, I'm not going to be dominated. And it's not saying that stuff is not going to happen to you, but I have the sense to understand that I have the dominion over this, and I will not let it rule my life. So God bless each and every one of you today. And I, like I said, um, you know, understand who you are. Remember who you are. Be constant and be in a constant acknowledgement of who you are in Christ Jesus. Because if you have a consciousness of who you are, then none of this worldly stuff can come against you. And you have a sense of dominance and a sense. You see, you see the white supremacists and all of them, they want to try to get our attention. But in Christ or in God, we have supremacy. That's why he gave us dominion. So establish yourself and understand that it is not, it is renewed day by day. So that means every day you got to get up and renew it. Every day you got to understand that it is, that it is it's, it's, every day you got to understand who you are. And it's not, because if you stop lining yourself up with it and be like, well, today I didn't establish myself, then trouble will come your way. You, you, you got to be consistent with God because God is a consistent God. So he expects us to be consistent. I'm supposed to be consistent in prayer. I'm supposed to be consistent in worship. I'm supposed to be consistent in praise. I'm not supposed to be dominated by the devil or dominated by the world. And if I'm staying with God, none of that can happen. Amen. So there may be one today who, does, who wants to, um, who's not saved. And you want to, um, you know, be saved. You can come up right now and we'll, we'll, we'll bring you to Christ. So there may be somebody that wants prayer or whatever it is that you're going through. You can come up to the altar right now. 